In this video I'm going to show you how to set up and copy the audio tracks for use with your prop jammer. The prop jammer uses a micro SD card to store these audio files so first thing we're going to do is pop in an SD card into the computer's card reader here and we're going to open it up. Now because this is a brand new card out of habit I just like to format it make sure that it's absolutely clean and formatted correctly for use with the prop jammer. So there we go, just formatted it. I'm gonna look at Windows Explorer. And there's our card, and it's empty. Before we get started copying audio tracks to the micro SD card, I wanna quickly describe to you how the prop jammer uses these audio tracks. So there's basically two different types of audio tracks that the prop jammer uses. Uh, the first one is the trigger track, and the second one is the ambient track. The trigger track is played when the prop jammer receives a trigger signal or you press the trigger button on the board. The ambient track is like the background track. It plays uh, in a loop while the prop jammer is in idle mode waiting for a trigger event to happen. The prop jammer uses only one trigger track. However, you can use more than one ambient track. If you choose to use multiple ambient tracks, these tracks will play sequentially while the prop jammer is waiting for a trigger. This feature allows you to have literally hours of ambient audio. You can also choose not to use an ambient track at all if you just want silence while the unit is waiting for a trigger event to happen. Uh, let's get started using audio. There's basically three simple steps to using audio with your prop jammer. The first step is to acquire your files. The second is to rename your files so that the prop jammer knows how to use them. And the third is to copy your files to the micro SD card and eject the card safely. I'm going to really spell these steps out for you in this video and uh, because of that it might sound complicated due to all the details I'm throwing in. But really this is a quite simple process once you do it once or twice. So uh, let's go ahead and give it a whirl. The first step is to find and download the audio tracks you want to use. The prop jammer can use either MP3 or WAV audio files and there are quite a few different sources for these type of audio files on the internet. A few of my favorites are uh, orangefreesounds.com, uh, soundbible.com and freesound.org. If you search for MP3 or WAV sound effects using Google or Bing or whatever search engine you like. Uh, you'll see that there's no lack of sources for uh, some pretty cool sound effects and what's nice is most of them are free. What I like to do is create a folder on my desktop, uh, this one here named Sound Effects. This is where I initially put the downloaded soundtracks that I want to use with the Prop Jammer. So when you download the audio files, you tell your computer to save the file to this folder that you created so you can find them again. If you have uh, a lot of files, you can add subfolders to this folder and organize your sound files however you feel comfortable. So for instance, you can make a folder inside this folder named Trigger Tracks and another folder named Ambient Tracks and store all your files in there. Uh, however you want to organize your files, it's totally uh, up to your preference. So in my example here, I already downloaded three different audio files that I'm going to use with my prop jammer. The first one here, this giant monster, is a short mp3 I'm going to use as my trigger track and the other two are going to be my ambient tracks. So since I'm using more than one ambient track, the prop jammer is going to know to play one ambient track after the other. This change in ambient tracks will happen either after a trigger event or if there's no trigger event, the second ambient track will play after the first one finishes. You can use as many ambient tracks as you wish and they can be as long as you want them to be, as long as they fit on your micro SD card. The second step is to rename the files that you want to use so that the prop jammer knows which one is going to be your trigger track and which ones are going to be your ambient tracks. So what I like to do is keep the original files that I downloaded from the internet here in this folder and just select them and with a right mouse click copy them and paste them, paste a copy of them to the desktop. So here they are. These are the files that I'm going to use and rename. 
and then these files, the original files, will stay in my sound effects folder for future use. The file you want to use as your trigger track will need to be renamed to 0001.mp3 or 0001.wave if it's a WAV file. This tells the Prop Jammer that this is your trigger track and to play it when the trigger event occurs. The Prop Jammer will only ever use one trigger track and it's always going to be named 0001.mp3 or WAVE. So in my case here I'm going to take my giant monster file and right click on it, hit rename and rename it to 0001 and it's already an mp3 file I don't have to put the extension on that. Now if you're only going to use a trigger track and you're not going to use any ambient tracks then you're pretty much done with this step but since I have two ambient tracks I want to use I'm going to rename these guys too. So the ambient tracks will always start with the name 0002.mp3 or wave and we'll go up from there. So my two files are going to be named 0002 and 0003. So I'm going to click on there, right click, rename 0002 and this guy here I'm going to rename 0003. So now the prop jammer will know that this one 0002 is my first ambient file and this one here is my second ambient file. The third and final step is to copy these newly named audio files to your micro SD card. The prop jammer recognizes and plays the audio files in the order that they are named and the order that you copy them onto your micro SD card. So I simply select the first file 0001 and drag it onto my micro SD card first. 0002, drag it on there second and 0003, drag it on there third and then you simply right click on your micro SD card here and hit eject. This safely ejects the card from your computer. So a quick recap. Your first step is to find and download your audio files. Second, you're going to rename these files 0001 for your trigger track and 0002 and up if you're using ambient tracks. And third, you're going to copy these files in numerical order to your micro SD card and safely eject the card from your computer. Now make sure your prop jammer is not powered up and install the micro SD card. Once you power the unit up, you should hear your first ambient track begin to play. Thanks, Thanks for watching. watching.